Hey guys, this is Chess Nerd Bird with another chess video. This time I'm going to be solving some tactics before I go play tonight's Tuesday night action game. Um, so, got to work on some of my tactics. I haven't done uh, many tactics lately. So, um, I think in the last video you guys saw, I think I'm actually still at that same rating, 1442. So, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into solving some tactics, getting warmed up before tonight's round. Um, so black just played king f6. Uh, so looking at it, white is down a rook, or um, a, a rook. Uh, he's down a knight, but he's got um, three extra pawns, so kind of equal, I guess. So what are we trying to do here? Are we trying to draw this, or are we trying to win this? Okay, so the move I'm looking at, or the thing I noticed is that the knight doesn't really have um, too many squares to go to, and the rook on d6 is not defended. And so if I were to play a move like c4, and then black were to take back, just b takes c4, and then after d takes c4, um, you're attacking the knight with a pawn. If the knight moves, then you can pick up the rook on d6. So it looks like it, it would be the right move. And we find out that that is correct. So we'll go on to the next one. Okay, so in this position, it looks like um, Black's King is in quite a bit of trouble as far as the amount of squares it can move to. Um, it looks like something like Rook B1 with the idea of coming over to Rook H1 would lead to checkmate and I don't see a good way for black to um, to stop this so after rook b1 uh, knight f3 could happen after rook h1 check but then just after rook or knight h2 rook takes h2 that's checkmate as well um, yeah I don't see any way for him to stop rook Yeah, on any of his moves to be able to stop that rook h1 idea so all right so another one solved so i'm doing pretty well for not not having solved that many um you know recently um this one looks pretty straightforward so the first thing i noticed was rook takes b3 if queen takes b3 then bishop takes e2 um so you want to you want a piece that way um well i guess you're already up a But black has a black has a queen and white doesn't. That's that's something I've been struggling with lately is the is the material count. Um I, I don't know why. Even even in my own games, like I'll forget if like I'm up actually a pawn or if my pawn or if my opponent has actually picked up a pawn and, and I'm with material disadvantage. So I've I've been struggling a lot lately with this with this material um count. Sorry, right, so let's look at this. So if I play um, bishop takes e2. All right, let's let's make this simpler. So what what exactly is black threatening with the move rook e2? So let's start there, right? So always look at your opponent's last move, see what what it threatens, what it does. So right now we, if it was black's turn again, he would want to play rook takes g2 check. The only move is king h1, then followed by rook takes h2 check. Only move king g1 and then queen to g1 or g2 it would checkmate so that is a threat so we have to eliminate that threat so rook takes b3 doesn't get rid of that threat because he, he black can still play rook takes g2 this would check it's a forcing move and there's nothing white can do to, to stop that checkmate so the only way to stop this checkmate is to actually play bishop takes e2 after queen takes e2 and then you can play rook takes b3 and white has the two rooks and the knight for the queen and two pawns. And that should be enough to hold a game. Okay, so next position. 
So it looks like White just recaptured um, something. I forget what was there, but he just recaptured something. And so if I look at this, now it looks like Black is actually up a piece currently. However, we notice the pawn on e5 is actually double attacking the knight and the queen. And there may or may not be a way to guard both of them. Thus, White will probably pick up um, the material back. Also notice the knight on a4 is being attacked by a pawn. So, it doesn't look like White has any real um, like threats against the king. Black does not have any checks. And so, we'd be looking more for captures. But I think the other thing to notice is that white's queen is also unprotected. So, if white or black were to play a move like queen e6, if white were to capture on f6, with the pawn, that would open up that e file. Thus, queen takes e2, and after pawn takes e7, to at least try to even justify the material. Uh, after queen takes e7, that's tough. So, after queen e6, white will probably move his knight on a4 because that's that's still threatened, and and black's already up a piece anyway. Um, so you play knight c3, thus guarding. His thus guarding his queen. However, now you've given yourself time because of the, the tempo you earned to get your nine on f6 to safety. And so I believe that is the right move. So I hope you guys are, are learning something from my thought process um, or at least either good or bad. So either what to do or what not to do, right? So um, I know the, the typical idea is to look at all forcing moves first was her check so in this case queen to d2 or e2 um and the the king can't go anywhere so you look at look at checks captures uh threats and mating nets um are kind of the the forcing moves that you want to examine first when solving some of these puzzles um as you can probably have noticed i don't always em employ this technique Um, okay, so the knight on e4 is pinned, so that's key right now. It's being attacked three times, but it's also, it is being guarded two times. Okay. Not that black would win a piece, but he could win a pawn. All right, so we look at the forcing moves like a check. Uh, bishop takes f7 as a check, but after king takes f7, I, I just don't, I don't see what, you know, what what white gained by that. Um, unless you're saying after bishop takes f7, and then you can play g5. But still, what, what did that what did that do do for for his position? So bishop takes f7, king takes f7, g5. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't really see what, what Black's going to do. You can play knight takes, knight takes e4, after d takes e4. Uh, yeah, I just, I just don't think that that's it. I think there's, there's got to be something else here. So what about bishop f4? So it hits the queen on, on e5. 
because that's that's something especially in this type of position right so i'm looking for something to do with black king i get hooked up i get hooked on that that trying to trying to force something there instead of just looking at the simple fact that black's queen is pretty much out of squares really the only square that she can go to would be um c7 and b8 and that's on a dark diagonal and so less looking at just bishop f4 just bringing the bringing that piece out and um hitting the queen and after a move like this I guess the point being that he had to give up he had to give up a piece for the pawn to be able to save his queen. So okay, so rook takes e3. Um so first thing I want to try to take advantage of is black's uh, weak back rank. So if there's a way to play a rook back to the eighth rank, that would be checkmate right now. Um, I don't think I can play um, a move that's going to put a check back there, but the fact that the back rank is weak, I can win the knight on um, on g4 by playing rook takes e3, knight takes e3, and then rook e1, and that knight is pinned to the e8 square. So usually when you think of pins, you think of them to pieces, but they can also be pinned to squares. So you can also pin things to a square itself, which in this case, the knight to e8. Um, there's no way to guard that knight. Um, the only thing black can do is actually just make a make a safe hole for his king, and then you just play rook takes e3. Or he can he can move his king that way too. But either way, um, you end up picking up picking up the piece. Okay. So here we go. So now we've got this. Um, this crazy looking position here. Um, instinctively, I just want to play queen takes. Uh, queen takes f7 check, king h8, that's the only move. And then you would play queen takes g8 check, queen to, or queen takes f8 check, queen to g8, which is the only move. And then you can play rook to h7 with a checkmate because the queen would be pinned. just like that okay so this is just a medium pattern so you have this the light squares around uh, white's king are very very weak um because of this fianchetto setup and you don't have and white doesn't have that light squared bishop um again the knight is pinned to that g2 square and the king can't move right now if a check were to happen he can't move the guard uh, the queen is playing double duty so the queen is guarding the knight, the knight on f3, and guarding um, the rook from coming down to check on e1. And so by playing rook e1 check, you overload the queen and or the knight, because the knight has the guard g2, and the knight is also helping guard e1 as well. And so when you play this, this check, oh my goodness, I played the wrong move order. I had the right pattern, but I just played in the wrong move order. Oh, I'll show you the right move order now that I slow down a little bit to actually think that when a knight captures, that it can go to, it can cover g2. So you have to take the knight first. Then you either play queen g2 checkmate, or after queen takes f3, then you have rook e1, which is actually a checkmate. Oh my, I always do something, something goofy on these when I'm solving them for, for people. I mean, who am I kidding? I do goofy things when I'm solving them, and it's just me solving, so. Um, okay, so it looks like white is up a piece. So how to take advantage of this? The situation here what what is the idea where are we going for what's the goal what is the goal of this position
Okay, for some reason I'm having a hard time with this one. I don't know. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I see that the the bishop on e3 is attacked once, but defended once. But um, a piece that that is singly guarded or has the same number of defenders as it does attackers is open to being um, double attacked by 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 the opponents in the sense that the opponent could. Uh, place a piece in a way that it would attack that piece one more time, but also threaten um, something else on the board, and thus becoming um, undefended, essentially, because now you don't have enough defenders. Um, so that being said, like a move by the bishop would um, Like for instance, if the you know the king was on the white king was on b7, for example, he could play bishop takes or bishop to a6 would check, thus going to pick up the bishop on e3. I know it doesn't make sense in this position, but that's kind of a just a, uh, an idea that could happen potentially in a position where where you know say say white black could actually pick up a piece um, if that bishop on a6 would be guarded. If you're following my train of thought, if you're not, it's okay. I'm very tired. I had a very long weekend at work with Labor Day. Um, and was running on about nine hours of sleep all weekend just because I was staying up late doing doing homework and uh, working on, on different things. So I've been on this position for a while and I still, I don't. I don't understand the point of this position. Um, unless the point is that you're going to end up trapping this this rook or, or bishop. Like if I play bishop d2 and then rook takes e1 and then knight takes e1, um, my bishop is still hitting the rook on c3 and my knight is now hitting the bishop on d3. So since the rook is more valuable, you would want to keep that. So you'd play bishop to uh, a3, or rook to a3, I'm sorry. I apologize, very, very tired. Um, I may not post this video because I'm just so exhausted. I don't know if, if what I'm saying is actually making sense. Anyway, so after rook a3, then you would play bishop c1 again, which would hit the rook. On a3. So now you bring the rook back to c3 and then you can play bishop b2. Thus the rook is out of squares where it can guard the bishop on d3 and then after the rook moves to c4 then you play knight takes d3 and I believe that is the order. There you go. So you guys just saw me take a very long time on this position and that is something that if you want to actually get better at your tactics is you need to take your time I'm sorry if you, not that not if you want to get better at tactics if you want to get better at calculation you need to take your time when solving tactics you don't try to rush through these just because there's a timer or, or whatever just because they're rated and you get more points because you solve them faster who cares if you solve them faster especially at this level like at my level, you know, knowing like okay, people show off, and a lot of people, you know, when we're at the chess center, when we're doing, you know, analyzing the game, and and they're asking for solutions. Um, you know, some people will, will just blurt out something just very quickly because it looks okay, but they haven't fully analyzed the line or or what they're actually you know think that they're looking at, and so nine times out of ten, they're wrong. Or they got the right move, but they didn't. They didn't see all the follow up. And so, if you're one of those people, I would challenge you to actually slow down and and analyze and look and calculate and actually make sure that you're looking at all possible replies. Because especially over the board, even if you do have a winning position, but your opponent plays. A very resourceful move that that just completely shocks you. 
you know, chess isn't just about moves on the board. It is psychology. You want to be objective as possible, but at the end of the day, if objectively your opponent just found a move that is fairly decent and very difficult for you to figure out, then you may not actually come out ahead in that game. So just take your time when, when solving tactics. There's a time and a place for solving faster. And of course, in a real chess game, you don't have unlimited amount of time. So for those of you who are going, well, yeah, David, that makes sense. But, you know, we play, you know, game 60 or, or game 75. You know, we don't have all the time in the world to calculate all these deep positions. Um, and you're right, you don't. So there is that, that time and place to work on your ability to solve faster and solve within a time period. Um, there's the 15 minute drills. There's what I do is I'll take four positions. I'll give myself 20 minutes, which essentially equates down to five minutes per, per position. Because really five minutes in a critical position as a class B player, if you haven't found it by then, you're probably not going to find it. So I find that's a, a pretty good, a pretty good balance. Um, but anyway, um, well, this position is pretty easy. The, the queen, the queen is, is trapped over here on, on G3. So knight H5 just looks like it wins. But before I play that, I'm just going to look at, look at some lines, but so, so there is that, that time and place. And so yeah, I'll set up, I'll set up four positions and I've got 20 minutes to solve them. I saw one position, I stopped the clock. I look at the answer. If I get it right, great, I move on. If I missed it and you have to be objective, you have to hold yourself accountable to this. If you missed it or I do it a little bit harder, if I solved it correctly, but I missed that there was a good resource of defense that's in the analysis of the solution, then I consider myself lost as well. And so for everyone I get wrong, I deduct five minutes from my time. A, it gets me better at time management. It gets me better at making decisions and it gets me better at calculating and getting it right the first time, but within a, a period of time that makes sense. So um, so I would definitely challenge challenge you to that. So yeah, I think just knight h5 works here because um, the, the queen on, on g3 is pinned or pinned, um, trapped and the two bishops, you know, are raking through on the, on the king side and the queen can't make it its way back over. So yeah. Um, so, okay, yeah. So he's going to give up the queen for a pawn and a piece. <clears throat> All right, so white, white to move. This one looks um, pretty good for for white. But we have to be careful here as well. Like a simple, like, knight f6 check. Uh, doesn't work right off the bat just because the bishop takes f6 and then if you were to play that the queen h7 back you would just run into the um, knight takes x h7 so we don't want to fall for one of those you know the knight can actually guard that square moment again so let's figure out a different way to break through so let's first just see if knight f6 would work because after bishop takes f6 and then you have e takes f6 now you're threatening queen g7 checkmate so hold that position in your mind so knight f6 bishop takes f6 e takes f6 next move queen g7 checkmate so what are black's defenses to this okay so there's really not too many so we can look at like a rook to g5 but i mean that's just going to fail to uh queen takes g5 check and then like knight g6 and then you can play the queen h6 and then you're, you're gonna skitty skirt around the knight to come into g7 oh no you're not either okay so you still you still pick up the rook okay so that's the thing i always have to keep in mind is okay i still picked up the rook in this position, is that good enough? Or is there actually a checkmate? So knight f6, bishop takes f6, e takes f6. Now rook g5. <coughs> I wonder if that position, if you'd have to play bishop. Um, 
um, to h7 check first. I was just looking at that because then no, because after knight takes on h7, it guards the rook on on g5. So again, falling for one of those the knight moves and then defends. So I think this knight takes knight to f6 works because you're gonna you're gonna win the rook here and still have a, a devastating attack. So knight f6, bishop takes f6, e takes f6. Rook g5. Is anything else, anything else just doesn't just doesn't work? Oh, okay. Well, I saw queen takes f6, but just with the giving up the queen, I didn't think he would do that. I thought maybe the rook was just better, and then after knight g6, then you're not giving up the queen. Okay. We'll just move right along. And so we just play rook d1. So I mean, right away, it looks like I could just play rook takes d1. Check, but after... Um, but after king g2, what do you have? Because now white is threatening um, e8 queen check. King g7 and then queen g8 checkmate. So after like do you even play rook takes d1? Or you play rook, rook takes d1 check, king to g2, and then you play rook d8. And the reason you play rook, rook to d8 is because he, he can't play e8 now because you just play you just play rook takes e8, knight takes e8, and then bishop takes e5. So now, now you just up a rook, and you're going to win the pawns on the, on, the, on the queen side. And if you play e takes d8, then you play bishop takes d8, and you're still up the rook. And you stopped yourself from from losing because he promoted a a, a a pawn. That's it. So defensive defensive tactics there to um, to not lose to that that promotion. So anytime you feel like you know a pawn's about to promote, you know you always have to look for those resourceful ideas to save yourself. So I think I'm just gonna do one more. Hopefully I do well on this one. So the first move I'm looking at instantly is a forcing move, and it um, puts two attackers on the rook on f7, which is knight to h5 check. So then just just rook takes f7 check, and that just looks really really good. And that's it. All right, that was a quick one. I'll do one more. Okay, this one's really quick too. This is a um, just a, a mating net. So you play attack, forces them up, and then the knight to e4, which is going to guard the guard the c5 square, but also attack the king. So, all right, that was another quick one. So we'll play we'll play one more, one more.
Okay, what's the idea? What's the idea here? What is going on in this position? I mean, there's no, there's no checks. The captures are 1964. Um, oh, and that's why you have to go in that order. So I looked at 1964, but I looked at D takes E4 and just moved right past it and just carried on. I was like, well, that doesn't do anything, but it does do something. After 1964 and D takes E4, then you can play D3. And win the bishop on e2 because the bishop can't move. So that's why when solving these tactics, you do want to look at those those forcing moves. And then see how the position changes. And then recalculate. So hope you enjoyed solving tactics with me today. Uh, we got up to 1483. As you can see, my progress is a little slow. I think my highest was over 2000 on chess.com tactics trainer um, when I was when I was solving every day. Um, here I'm doing them for the videos and showing you to take your time when solving tactics if you're trying to work on your calculation skills. Um, if you're just beginning and you're just trying to get better at seeing, you know, pattern, tactical, you know, patterns and motifs, um, you know, do the really easy puzzles and do them, try to do them quickly so that you, you ingrain those, those patterns and ideas into your, into your brain subconsciously so that when you are at the phase where you're going to spend this time calculating tactics you know you might still some miss some things like like yours truly but you have a better idea of of what you're doing and a good way to, to practice your tactics is to play longer games and then analyze them afterwards um you know we always want to play blitz and just think that we can get better by playing blitz and Really, the great players at Blitz are great because they spend a lot of time playing slower games and going over those games and, and analyzing them and seeing those those patterns, recognitions, and understanding you know when a position will call for you know tactical alerts to be sent off. So, um, hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're if you see this and then you're coming to the Charlotte Chess Center, I will see you there. If not, then I won't see you there. And then hopefully I'll see you guys around. So if you like this, this video, make sure you click the like button. Make sure you subscribe. I post videos pretty much on a daily basis. Um, and thanks for watching.